Four students have died following yet another tragic school shooting, this time at Oxford High School in Michigan. The 15 year old suspect is thankfully in custody. We don't know too much about him and we don't know too much about what his potential motive was. But I will give you the details of what we know at this moment. Now investigators identified the victims who died as Madison Baldwin, a 17 year old. Tate Meyer, a 16 year old. Hannah St. Juliana, a 14 year old. And Justin Schilling, a 17 year old. Meyer died in a patrol car as a deputy was attempting to rush him to the hospital due to the severity of his wounds. Now others of course were injured as a result of this shooting. Seven other people were wounded, some critically, including a 14 year old girl who was placed on a ventilator after the surgery. And before I continue on with the story, I just wanna caution everyone to be careful with what you find on social media, what you see on social media. For instance, there was a widely shared video that was kind of misidentified. And luckily the sheriff of the county cleared up that there was some false information or misreporting in that regard. But everything that we're sharing with you now has been widely reported has been confirmed based on what the sheriff has said. And again, at this moment, we don't exactly know what the motive was, but we do know what the charges are against this 15 year old suspect. And since he's a minor, of course, we don't have any more details in regard to his identity, including what his name is. Now, deputies arrested the student in a hallway within minutes of their arrival. And he apparently put his hands up in the air and he didn't resist arrest. Also. In Investigators are again trying to determine what the motive is. However, since this is a minor, the suspect is a minor, the authorities need permission from the minor's parents in order to question him. And according to the sheriff, the person that's got the most insight. And the motive is not talking, meaning that they do not have the ability to ask this 15 year old any questions because the parents have not granted permission. In fact, the parents are potentially facing some charges in this case as well. So the authorities announced that the suspect will in fact be charged as an adult. And the charges include the following. One count of terrorism, and I just want to caution you guys in regard to the meaning of terrorism in the state of Michigan. So when you think of terrorism, usually it's something that's politically motivated. But under state laws in Michigan, terrorism really applies to an incident or a case where there's intimidation. And so the argument here is, through the mass shooting or through the school shooting, it led to intimidation among the student body, the administrators, the educators in the school. So that's why he is facing that charge. It's not necessarily a politically motivated motive that led to the shooting. I'm just telling you what the you know what the press conference indicated, what the sheriff had said, and I want to give you some more here. He's also facing four counts of first degree murder. Seven counts of assault with intent to murder, and also 12 counts of possession of a firearm. Now, initially, the authorities believed that he only had seven, you know, bullets left. But now it turns out that he had much more than that. I don't even want to give an exact number. Not that it's an incredibly important element to the story, but. Details keep changing, so I don't want to give you a number that might change again in the future. But he had more than seven bullets on him. But the weapon he had was not the kind of weapon that carries a high capacity magazine. I'll get to that in just a second. Now, since the suspect is a minor, again, the authorities have not been able to talk to him directly yet. But they have, of course, launched an investigation, including you know executing warrants to search his home. They've obtained his cell phone and other. Objects that they're going to use in their in their investigation. They also found some writings of his that might clear up what the motive was in this shooting. And of course, the suspect obtained the gun from his own home. Apparently, his father had purchased the weapon prior to or actually during the Black Friday holiday sales. Okay, so the gun. Uh, let me give you the details. The boy's father on Friday bought a nine millimeter Sig Sauer uh, SAR uh, used in the shooting. Sheriff uh, 
Bouchard said uh, he didn't know why the man br uh, bought the semi-automatic handgun, which his son had been posting pictures of and practicing shooting. So this is where the parents come in and possible criminal charges against the parents uh, might be filed because they clearly did not secure the weapon. They didn't keep it in a safe place. They have their teenage son posing in pictures with this weapon and then later he used the weapon in the school shooting. Uh, another detail that was shared with the public by the sheriff was the fact that the school had noticed some questionable behavior uh, from this student and so they had notified the parents about it. The parents were apparently on campus discussing their son with administrators hours before the shooting took place. Okay, so we don't know any other details about that, but that is information that was shared with the public by the sheriff. Also, authorities were made aware of posts on social media that said that there had been some threats of a shooting at roughly 1,700 student school at this 1,700 student school. But the sheriff said that they did not know about the rumors until after the attack. Now one student said that he had actually texted several younger cousins in the morning and they said they didn't want to go to school and he got a bad feeling. He asked his mom if he could do his assignments online. Bryant, the student here, said he heard vague threats for a long time now about plans for a shooting. Again, we don't have any additional details on that, but there are some claims that there were warning signs, some red flags prior to the shooting taking place. Now, one of the videos that's been circulating online features students who have barricaded themselves in a classroom and there's someone knocking on the door asking for the students to let that individual in. Initially, as this video was going viral online, it was thought to be the shooter himself pretending to be a police officer so he could be given access to the classroom. The sheriff has now said that the person knocking on the door in fact was a police officer. That's what the sheriff says. So if you have come across this video, just understand that the person knocking on the door and asking to be let in is not the shooter. But I think that this video is still important to watch because you can see that the students have not only barricaded themselves, you can see that the drills that they now have to undergo, the training that they now have to undergo because of the prevalence of these school shootings has led to them you know, taking certain actions, which is incredibly sad when you think about it. I mean, to now put the onus on students to protect themselves from mass shooters because our politicians refuse to do anything about gun violence in this country. We refuse to do any type of common sense gun legislation, even gun legislation that the vast majority of Americans favor. Simple things like background checks, right? We're not talking about banning guns. We're talking about just common sense gun legislation that could minimize the prevalence of the gun violence that we're seeing in this country, certainly the prevalence of the school shootings. But watch this video and pay close attention to honestly what stood out to me, how calm the students are and how it's very clear that they've underwent training in order to be prepared for this kind of situation. Let's watch. Yes, Sheriff's office, safe to come out. Yeah, he said it's safe to come out. Now we're not willing to take that risk right now. I can't hear you. We're not taking that risk right now. Okay, well, come to the door and look at my bag, bro. No. Yeah, bro. He said bro. He said bro. He said bro. Red flag. So they suspected that the individual trying to get into the room was the shooter himself. But it turns out that it was a cop and he did in fact use the word bro, which the students are smart. They're like, yeah, use the word bro. I don't know if that's really a cop. We're not gonna let him in, that's a red flag. But as you can see, they later exited out of a window into a secure building. And you know, there are other videos that I wanted to share of this before I get into some Gun statistics, gun violence statistics, which of course we do 
over and over again on the show because of how often incidents like this occur. Um, Aiden Page uh, went on CNN to uh, discuss his experience uh, during the shooting. And uh, he talks about what the students have uh, learned to do when there's an active shooter on campus. Let's watch. We're looking at a picture that you took of what looks like a bullet hole with a lot of chairs piled up. What is that image of? Um, there was, we made this barricade and there was a bullet hole that shot through our door. So the shooter was close enough to actually shoot into your classroom through, uh, through the door. Uh, yes. Wow. You know, when, when you say you went into lockdown, what actually did you do? I mean, obviously you're in a classroom and I know you've had training on, on this. Do you, do you try to hide in different places? Do you try to, what's the instruction? Basically, we lock the door. We have this jammer called a night lock. We barricade it as best as we can, and then we try to hide. And I understand students, some students who are trying to arm themselves with whatever they could find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, we grab calculators, we grab scissors, and just in case of the shooter got in, and we had to wow. attack them. You know, oftentimes we talk about the victims who lose their lives or victims who are badly injured as a result of these shootings. But it isn't too often that anyone considers the kind of mental health impact that these kinds of shootings have on young people. We're talking about kids. And and what's jarring to me is almost how desensitized they seem when they're talking about these incidents, how how they're able to remain calm. You, you know, the video that we showed you earlier of the students barricading themselves in that classroom because of how commonplace it's become. But it shouldn't be normalized. It shouldn't be commonplace. I mean, at this point, because of a lack of leadership among members of Congress, we just expect literal children to handle it like adults. Like, hand, you, just, you just go through the training, live in fear, you know, because this could happen to anyone. It could happen at any school. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. But unfortunately, the debate about, about what to do in regard to guns in this country completely dominated by two extremes, okay? And I, I would argue that the uh, pro-gun individuals are, are certainly more extreme than those on the left. But no one ever really listens to people who are right there in the middle. Like this is one of the issues where I think the middle is right. We don't need to ban guns, but there is common sense gun legislation that we should pass. Everyone who wants to purchase a gun should undergo a background check with no loopholes, no loopholes. You go to a private gun show, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun without a background check. It's easy. You, 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 you're a private seller, you wanna sell your gun or give your gun to some other individual, that individual needs to go through a background check. It's that simple. And I love the fact that the parents in this case might face some criminal charges for being incredibly irresponsible with their firearm. Because that's not talked about enough either. The fact that parents just buy weapons, leave them hanging around, they don't lock them in a safe, they don't keep them away from their kids. How many stories have we seen where children accidentally shoot themselves? How many school shootings have happened because some idiot kid grabbed their parents gun and decided to open fire on a school campus? How many times? But we can't have that discussion, right? The middle gets ignored all the time on this issue. Yes, we have a second amendment right to bear arms. And I believe in that second amendment right. I am not in favor of banning firearms. But the fact that we're so laxed with something that is causing so much death, so much pain and so much suffering in this country boggles the mind. And by the way, today was the first day that the Supreme Court heard oral arguments about Mississippi's anti-abortion law. Because you know, the right wing is so concerned about protecting life, allegedly. But when it comes to this issue, when it comes to school shootings, when it comes to living, breathing children who get gunned down again and again in one school shooting after the next, who cares for Second Amendment rights? Which in their minds think there shouldn't be any limitations. Anyone should be able to obtain a gun. There have been 48, 
48 shootings this year in K through 12 campuses. In fact, 32 of them since August 1st. Just let that sink in for a second. And I know we haven't covered every single one of them. We haven't, we haven't scratched the surface. We've covered, I don't even know how many, maybe a few of them. Because if we covered every mass shooting in this country, that's all we would talk about on this show. Take a look at this graph put together by Vox, gunpolicy.org, United Nations Development Program. Those are the sources for the information here. But the United States, pretty big outlier when it comes to gun violence. Uh, compared to other countries, of course, because more guns means more gun violence, right? I mean, every constitutional right that we have has limitations. First Amendment right has limitations. You can't say whatever you want whenever you want to say it. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Why is it that when it comes to the Second Amendment, which has to do with weapons that kill. The right wants no limitations at all. And it just, it makes no sense to me. Finally, I want to take you to a statement by the Oakland County Sheriff. His name is Michael Bouchard. And I really appreciated the statement that he made during his press conference today because reporters were asking about gun laws. And he made a great point about the gun laws that we already have in place. Let's watch. I think I have the feeling a lot of law enforcement has. We have a whole lot of gun laws that are meant to hold criminals accountable when they commit a crime, when they use a gun, when they carry a gun illegally, and they're not utilized today. We see this across the nation. We catch somebody illegally with a gun and it's pled down to a misdemeanor and they're out. We've had people, you know, that have been charged with gun crimes three and four times. I believe the surest way to get a handle on holding people accountable when they're doing things illegally with a gun is to punish them. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. I'm not one of these tough on crime, you know, throw the book at them type of people, but we're talking about a weapon that murders people. It's not a joke. And if people are breaking the law by possessing, possessing firearms or doing things with firearms they're not supposed to be doing, that should be taken away from. They should face the, the true consequences of that and not be able to plea it down to a misdemeanor. We gotta start thinking in a common sense way about what to do. Because it's not fair to children or to educators to put the onus on them. It's also not fair to, I don't know if you guys have experienced it in your state or your municipality. You can't even go to a sporting event in Los Angeles right now with any type of bag. You can't go with a clear bag, you can't go with a backpack, you can't go with a fanny pack, nothing. You have to leave your bags at home or check them into some sort of locker because they're terrified that people have guns. So everyone else is inconvenienced. Everyone else has to change their lives and the way that they live just to accommodate for nonsensical laxed gun laws and laxed enforcement of the gun laws that we do have. It's pretty sick. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.